Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how you can start writing cleaner unit tests by using Fluent Assertions in .NET. This video covers .NET Core, .NET Framework and Standard since the package is targeting all of those frameworks. Fluent Assertions is a package created originally by Dennis Duman and it is the most popular framework that allows us to write Fluent Assertions as the name implies and we're going to see very quickly what those Fluent Assertions are. Before we dive into the code, I want to remind you that this video is part of my Essential Nougat Packages series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe and ring the sub notification bell to get notified when I upload a new episode. So what we have here is a few unit tests. You might remember this from the unit testing video with XUnit. I am using XUnit to write these unit tests, and what we are unit testing here is a calculator class, which is very simple in nature. It has basic add, subtract, multiply, and divide functionality. And then it has a text here where we can get the value that we have calculated. And the unit tests actually just verify that. For example, we have tests for addition, uh, some tests with test data, some tests for multiplication, and then some tests for division. And of course, last but not least, we also have one where we divide by zero and see how we can assert something that is thrown. So let's go to the top and make this smaller. Um, as you can see currently, the way we're asserting is we're using the xunit.assert class. What this is doing is we say we expect this value to come back. In this example, the expected value is coming from the inline data here. And then we're just asserting that this equals to what we're getting back from the calculator, which is the system under test. And the format is as follows, assert and then equal and then expected and then result. And if we run these tests, just all of them, you will see that they all pass. And the first one here is this one. And it says that, yeah, we're expecting this value here. Now, the problem with this assert is actually that it doesn't really read that great. Think about it. Your code should just sound natural. And so in this scenario, you have assert.equal expected result. Mm, that kind of makes sense. But what if you could actually write it in a more fluent way. We're going to see how we can write that. Another issue that Fluent Assertion actually is fixing is it gives way, way better messages when the system actually fails, when the test actually fails. And we're also going to see that. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to the dependencies and I'm going to say manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to add the Fluent Assertions package. Don't confuse it with Fluent Validation. That's a different one. We want to go for the Fluent Assertions one. And I'm adding that in the project. And now let's see how we can actually rewrite these assertions in fluent assertions. Uh, I'm going to copy that instead of just rewriting it and just paste it again and say at the end fluent assertions, FA. And the reason why I want to do this is because I want to show you what I talked about before where the messages are actually way better with fluent assertions. On a side note, I know that there's another project called Shouldly that does Sort of the same thing, and yeah, the project is fine, but I personally recommend Fluent Assertions as I believe it is the better project of the two. That is a personal opinion. I believe that Fluent Assertions API is better though, so that's why I'm using it, because it just reads better for me. Now, let's rewrite those tests. So the first thing is, how do we check that two values are equal, that two values should be equal? And the way we do this is we say that result which is the value we got back from the test, from the act section, and say dot should, and this should is coming from fluent assertions, it's an extension method, and then we simply say be expected. And that's it, we just rewrote that. And look how more natural this sounds like. Result should be expected. It reads like English. Now let's fix the next one. So what we have here is assert that starts with so a string starts with the result is, because if we go to our calculator, this is how the text actually looks like. And the way we would rewrite this is actually, as you can see here, what I'm checking is the text is sut dot text should dot start with, and then the text that it should start with. And I'm going to copy that and paste it here look how much cleaner this reads just the text should start with a value it again it reads like english and i'm going to do the same thing for the last one which is it should actually end with the text representation of the value so i'm simply going to do sut.text should end with and i'm going to say result dot 
to string. And if I delete that, we have our test here. Now, of course, I'm going to run those tests and you're going to see that they will pass. But what I actually want to show you is, let me just expand them here, is what they look like when they fail. And for that reason, I'm going to mess up with test data a little bit. So what I'm going to say probably here is this starts with hey result is instead of the result is and this will cause my tests to fail so if i run them again let me just make this bigger you're gonna see that these two sets of three tests all fail because the assertion here failed let's see how the messages look like this is the non-fluent assertion one and let me actually make this bigger and let's see how they read so the x unit assert which is actually a pretty decent way to do assertions tells us that it expected he result is but the actual was the result is fine but let's see how the same test the same fail test looks like in fluent assertions as the package name implies this reads way better it says that it expected that the property sut dot text to start with he result is but the result is zero differs near the the index zero it just gives you so much more information tells you exactly where the problem is while the previous one just tells you what it should be and how it failed but it doesn't tell you anything else so if i make this smaller again i want to show you more cases that this is just so much more helpful one of them would probably be the way we throw so we have this divide should throw divide by zero exception when you divide by zero actually let me real quick fix those tests this should be the and this should be that and yeah we have this thing where if you divide by zero obviously you cannot do that so for that reason c sharp will throw a divide by zero exception we know that now the way we assert throws is we just say assert dot throws divide by zero exception and then we give it a lambda which is a function that returns an object which is a way to essentially trigger this exception controllably in this method the throws method if I copy that and create the fluent assertions equivalent and I'm going to go ahead and add the FA at the end to differentiate them then the way I can write this is result func should throw divide by zero exception so much cleaner so much better so much more readable now both of these tests are actually running and they're working fine but what if you actually want to also validate that the message of the exception is the one you expect Let's see how we can do that in the uh, X unit assert one. In here, you're gonna have to capture the exception. So I'm gonna have to say that not only this throws here, but also the exception is also captured. And I need to say that assert dot equal, and then exception dot message, comma. So that's uh, actually that's a mistake. First, you say what you expect, and then exception comma. So I'm going to paste attempted to divide by zero and then comma exception message. And if I run the test, you can see that it will now pass because that's what divide by zero exception actually has as a message by default. Now I have two lines here and this doesn't read particularly great, especially because my throws assertion also returns a variable, which I don't think it's the cleanest way to go about it. But how can we do this with fluent assertions? Well, we simply say the same thing, result func should throw, and we say what we want to throw, and then you say dot with message, and then you just put your expected message. And if I just run this now, you can see that it is validating that the message is this. It's much more fluent, it's much more, I think, cleaner personally. And I did the whole thing in one line, and somebody can just go in and read it, and it just makes sense. Uh, I also have a validation examples uh, method here because I want to show you a couple of other examples on how fluent assertions is actually great. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private, uh, maybe not read only, just a list of strings. And I'm going to call it name list. And I'm going to initialize it to uh, have a few names. So I'm going to just quickly say Nick. So now I have four names in that list. And let's see how I can actually check whether this name list contains a name or not with fluent assertions so i simply do name list dot should and then of course what would you do you'd say contain and then the name so it should contain john now 
I run this and as you can see the test is passing. How can I check that the list does not contain? So should not contain item in list? Well of course I say I don't know, Zoe or something. And if I run that test, you will see that the test will fail because it doesn't exist. And it will tell you exactly, look how detailed the message is. Expected name list, Nick, John, Thodoris, and Mike to contain Zoe. And of course it doesn't, so it's failing. So it gives you all the contents of the list, which is something that assert wouldn't just do for you. And I really encourage you to go further and read the documentation of Fluent Assertions. You can go to any length that you want. For example, if I wanted to say that I want to check if the list contains something that starts with something or just contains something wildcard, I can simply say contains match and then simply say Theo star and star of course will match everything after that. And if I run the test, you will see that the test will pass because it will match that. And if I do the same with end with, I can simply say with end with key and I run the test again and they pass now. There are so many other things you can do. If I just type should and then do dot, you can see that you can check that it contains, it equals, it contains a match and you can have a predicate in there that matches something. You can say not contain and be equivalent to. And be equivalent to, uh, for strings especially, is very useful because sometimes you don't care about the case of a string. So you can simply do a check and if, for example, actually this is worth showing. If I just move that and say name list and I get the first item which is my name, Nick, and I do should be equivalent to. And then I simply say Nick with all capitals. Obviously the value is not Nick with all capitals, but because I say equivalent to, the test will pass because equivalent to doesn't actually care about the case. And there's extensive documentation on the Fluent Assertions website. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. Please give the project a star. It's a very good project and I highly recommend you use it. It will really clean up the way your tests actually fail and it will allow you to write cleaner tests as well. That's all I had for you for this video. I couldn't really cover every single feature of Fluent Assertions, but I wanted to make a video about it because I think it's a very, very important project for the donor community. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new episode. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.